In this video we'll take a look at the Heathkit IP2718 Tri Power Supply, a low voltage power supply offered in kit form by the Heath Company from 1976 to 1990. One of Heathkit's larger kit product lines was power supplies, initially for vacuum tube based equipment offering high DC voltages for tube circuits and low AC voltages for tube filaments, as well as battery chargers and eliminators. With the advent of transistors in the 1960s, Heathkit introduced low voltage power supplies for solid state electronics. Some were dedicated supplies for specific units like amateur radio equipment, while others like the IP2718 were intended as bench instruments for testing electronic circuits. The IP2718 was called a tri power supply because it offered three independent outputs. Offered from 1976 to 1990, it was one of the longer-lived products, surviving up to the end of the Heathkit kit era. The price varied over the life of the product, but was initially introduced at a price of US $89.95. Offered as a kit, there was also a factory-assembled version, the SP2718. The IP2718 replaced an older model IP28 that had similar features. Offered around the same time were other power supplies in the IP2700 series. These were all single output variable supplies with different voltage ranges and a choice of analog or digital meters. They had more features and were more expensive than the IP2718 and not particularly successful, likely because they only offered one output. The IP2718 provides one fixed output of 5 volts DC plus or minus 5% at up to 1.5 amps. There are two 0 to 20 volt DC variable outputs at up to 0 0.5 amps. Regulation is less than 0.1% or 20 millivolts from no load to full load for the 20 volt supplies and less than 3% or 150 millivolts for the 5 volt supply. Line variation is spec at less than 0.2% or 40 millivolts for a line voltage change of 20 volts for the 20 volt supplies and less than 0.2% or 10 millivolts for the 5 volt supply. Ripple and noise are less than 5 millivolts RMS. Current limiting is fixed at slightly above the full rated current output and can handle a short. The tracking range is 2 to 18 volts with an error of less than 1 volt. A single meter can monitor any output voltage or current with an accuracy of 5% of full scale. The meter voltage ranges are 0 to 20 volts and 0 to 5.5 volts and current ranges are 0 to 550 milliamps and 0 to 2 amps. The three supplies are floating with respect to ground and can be connected in series or parallel to obtain higher output voltages or current. The unit operates on 100 to 135 volts AC or 200 to 270 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz, and takes 100 watts at full load. It weighs 10 pounds or 3.7 kilograms. The unit is in a metal case in the classic Heathkit blue color. The rear panel has the hardwired line cord and safety and approvals labels. There's a fuse accessible inside the unit. The three black plastic units are insulating covers for the three output transistors. This unit is marked with CSA approval and Heath Zenith Toronto, Ontario, indicating that it was sold in Canada. At the bottom are some additional model and safety stickers and the 120 240 volt AC voltage selector switch. On the front panel, at bottom left is the AC power switch and a red neon power indicator lamp. The large meter indicates output voltage or current depending on the position of the meter selector switch. Any of the 5 volt A or B outputs can be monitored for voltage or current. The colors on the meter switch match the ranges to use on the meter. The binding posts provide chassis and electrical ground, green, as well as plus, red, and minus black outputs for each of the three supplies. The 5 volt supply is fixed. The A and B outputs are variable from 0 to 20 volts. A switch selects whether the variable outputs are in independent or tracking mode. In independent mode, the output voltages of supplies A and B are set independently using the corresponding output knobs. In tracking mode, the A and B supplies both vary using the concentric knobs. The inner and outer knobs are clutched so they normally turn together and the output voltages track each other. By turning only the inner or outer knobs, you can adjust the voltages separately.
All three supplies are floating with respect to ground. This allows them to be used as plus or minus supplies, or they can be connected in series to generate higher voltages up to a maximum of 45 volts. The outputs should not be referenced to more than 200 volts from ground. You can also connect the outputs in parallel for higher current, but need to add external 0 0.5 ohm current equalizing resistors. Removing the cover, we can take a look inside. The unit is all solid state, utilizing 24 diodes and 18 transistors. The 5 volt supply uses a regulator IC. The 20 volt supplies use circuits with discrete transistors. Three output transistors are mounted on the back of the case for a heat sink and are insulated from it. Most of the wiring is on a single printed circuit board. Two small transistors on the PCB also have heat sinks. There are two trimmer pots on the PCB that are adjusted during calibration. No high voltages are present on the printed circuit board. It also uses point-to-point -point wiring with a factory assembled wiring harness for the connections to the front panel, meter, large filter capacitor and transformer. There's an internal 1.5 amp line fuse in a holder. The fixed 5 volt supply is useful for TTL digital logic circuits which run on 5 volts. The variable supplies are ideal for analog circuits which commonly require plus and minus voltages, often plus and minus 12 volts. It was also common for computers that use serial ports to require plus and minus 12 volts. The tracking mode makes it easy to adjust both adjustable supplies together. Here we can see a load connected to the 5 volt supply and we can monitor the output voltage the red scale on the meter showing very close to 5 volts and current on the black scale with a range from 0 to 2 amps. It's reading now about 150 milliamps. Now with the load on the A output we can monitor the voltage and current as we adjust it using the supply A control. voltage and current. Likewise we can adjust and monitor the B output as its control is adjusted. Voltage and current. If we move to tracking mode, both supplies change in unison with the same dial. We can adjust the voltage difference between the supplies if desired by turning only the inner or outer dial. The meter scales for variable outputs are 0 to 20 volts and 0 to 550 milliamps. Mm -hmm. Here we have a load that can go to more than the rated 500 milliamps. As we adjust the output voltage, it starts to fold back when the maximum current is exceeded. I found that this unit limits the current to about 630 milliamps at about 14 and a half volts. I bought this unit in January of 2019 from a Kijiji seller in Ottawa, Canada. He demonstrated that it was working and said that he had built it about 30 years ago but didn't really use it. It was complete but without a manual. Taking it home, I found that the unit was assembled well and very clean inside and I confirmed that it was working. I found several incomplete manuals on the internet as PDF downloads. The manual is of the usual excellent Heathkit quality with detailed assembly instructions, test and calibration steps, theory of operation and troubleshooting, and a schematic with voltages listed. The previous owner had intentionally locked the A output at 5 volts. The supply A knob would not turn. I think he used super glue or maybe Loctite on the control potentiometer. I was able to loosen it by heating it with a heat gun, making it variable again. 
I made a visual inspection of all the components. I checked the large filter caps for ESR and they were good. I cleaned the switch contacts with deoxid and cleaned the case and knobs with some soap and water. I checked the outputs at full load. The AC ripple was good. In fact, it was too small to be seen on an oscilloscope, even with a moderate load. I then performed the calibration procedure. This uses the internal meter and doesn't require any test equipment. The process consists of first adjusting the meter zero if needed. Then in tracking mode, adjust output A for 20 volts at full output as read on the meter using a trimmer pod on the PCB. Then adjust output B for 20 volts at full output as read on the meter using another trimmer pod on the PCB. Finally, you check that the output is between 19 and 20 volts when in independent mode. In summary, no parts changes were made as the unit was fully working electrically. In summary, the IP2017 was a popular power supply that was a good fit for solid state digital and analog electronics. It was offered for about 14 years, lasting until Heathkit left the kit business. The unit is still a useful piece of test equipment today. It might just become my go-to bench power supply, replacing this newer Alenco unit.